The mystery of a teenager who falls asleep for days on end. The longest stretch you slept without waking is about 40 hours. You physically cannot wake him up. You can be standing there with a brass band and you cannot wake him. On the surface, football mad Carew Harris is just like any other teenager. Carew is the cool kid at school. <laughs> Worry about his image, always does his hair before he goes to school, um, and lives for football. But for the last three years, he's been struck down by a mystery illness, which has seen him suffer extreme sleepiness for weeks on end. The longest stretch he's slept without waking is about 40 hours. You physically cannot wake him up. You can be standing there with a brass band and you cannot wake him up. Come on, can you wake up? and he'll only respond with one word. Can you wake up, darling? Stop. But the attacks, or episodes as they're known, don't stop there. It's kind of like I'm in, I'm in a different world when I'm in an episode. Like seeing things, like big bugs and stuff on the wall. Who was the matter? I've never really had hallucinations before, so it was like kind of scary. And when they come out in the episode, I don't remember much. The sleepiness suddenly stops and they are then back to normal. And it's like a switch has turned when they don't feel sleepy and they're aware they're back to normal and the family are aware they're back to normal. So it's not just about the sleep, it's about the mood, the personality change as well. He's really, really agitated, not like a normal teenager. And he's quite childlike as well. Yeah, don't be scared, you're in bed with me, you don't need to be scared. I feel like his whole life is just passing by and yeah, he's just missing out on so much of his childhood. Carew's problem started after a family day out with friends. Carew spent the day in a swimming pool when we went out to dinner that evening and he couldn't open his eyes. At the time we thought it was a reaction to chlorine. Um, it was so extreme, he really couldn't open his eyes and it went into major headaches. Um, and that then went into a week-long or 10-day-long episode of severe migraines, vomiting, pain, hallucinations, um, which led us to immediately go to the doctors. And they did like an emergency MRI to check it wasn't a brain tumour. Uh, I was scared, but after the MRI, I was like, really happy I didn't have a brain tumour, so that was good. When the results came back, that, that was clear. That was a huge relief, but then it was just that big unknown, well, what was it? And at the time, I think we just thought maybe he'd caught a virus, and it was, that was the end of it. But six weeks later, Carew had another attack, and this time it lasted for five weeks. When he's in episode, um, he sleeps 22 hours a day. The two hours he wakes up, he'll eat. Um, I have to take food to him. I make sure I get enough liquid into him. He uses the bathroom. He won't come out of his room. He won't do anything. The two hours he's awake, he'll just lie in his bed, and then he just goes straight back to sleep. Trying to drink. Can you try and sit up? Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Spending so much time asleep has had a huge impact on Carew's education. From Christmas to the end of school in the summer, he only attended about four or five weeks of school. I miss a lot of tests and exams for school. I, I miss a lot of important matches for my football team. I don't like to miss games, I like to play football. Danielle has tried to get help for her son. We were sort of knocking on doors, trying to get doctors to look at him and see him. But they always came up against the same problem. By the time you found a doctor to see him, often he's either coming out of the episode or the episode's over. So the doctors just don't believe there's anything wrong with him. All I was ever told was it was just migraines and that we should just self-medicate with over-the-counter drugs, ibuprofen and paracetamol. 
In desperation, Danielle started to record Carew's episodes on her mobile phone to prove to doctors there really was something wrong. Come on, I'll get you up to bed. Here's my wake up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can't sleep on the sofa. Come on. They're always painless. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Eventually, Carew was seen by a neurologist who ordered an EEG, or electroencephalogram, a test which monitors brain activity. This is often used to detect epilepsy. They were inconclusive. They didn't really show much. They showed some minor abnormalities, but within the realm of what is normal. They were no further forward. Because it's nothing you've ever heard of and people just don't understand, they just think he's a teenage boy that wants to sleep um, and maybe he doesn't want to go to school. And it, it's, it is a massive strain and then people have always got something to say, oh, well don't let him on the computer, don't let him on his iPhone, that's probably causing it. Well if that was the case then all teenagers would be sleeping 22 hours a day so you have to, it is quite upsetting. Um, because people just don't understand. Keen footballer 14-year-old Carew Harris has confounded doctors with his mysterious symptoms. For the last three years, he's been falling into a deep sleep for days at a time for no apparent reason. He's just lying in bed all day, every day. Just, he's so apathetic, he has no connection with the outside world. Sweetie, come on, it's a day and a half since you've got up. Please, sweet, I need you to have something to eat and drink. Okay, I might stuff It's just like his life is just wasting away. Danielle even struggles to take him to doctor's appointments. Can you try and get up? You have meeting today, come on. Should I take some food in? No, I'll tell you what I will tell you. Despite seeing a neurologist and several paediatricians, Carew is no closer to knowing what is causing his excessive sleepiness. It was thought he was suffering from a form of migraine, but Danielle isn't convinced. It was only at the beginning of this year that he'd had so many episodes um, that it was quite clear that he wasn't sleeping due to the side effect of a migraine. There was something else going on with him. Danielle began to monitor Carew's episodes. I started making a chart, not only for my own records, but so that I can prove to doctors just how much time he'd had off of school. Um, green is a good day, pink is bad. Danielle took Carew to see yet another doctor. We were on to our third paediatrician at this point, um, and this time when we could actually prove to her, because I'd been making a diary of how much time he'd had off school. Um, she actually listened and referred me to another neurologist who um, could quite clearly see that there must be something wrong to have that much time of school. After three years searching for answers, the neurologist gave Danielle some hope. She mentioned a rare condition she'd heard of that it was just possible Carew might have. I was thinking, no, that doesn't fit. Some of the sort of lesser sim well-known symptoms other than just the sleeping, like the overeating, that didn't fit Carew. So at the time, I had said to him, no, I don't think it was. But obviously, I came home and did the research myself more fully, um, just on the internet. Um, and it, it just, to me, fitted everything. The condition was Klein-Levin syndrome, or KLS otherwise known as Sleeping Beauty Syndrome. It's a rare neurological disorder which only affects around one person in a million. The majority, like Carew, are teenage boys. We're probably one of the busiest um, sleep centres in the UK. But even for us, it's still vanishingly rare. It's actually easily missed and quite hard to diagnose. 
And it's this tantalizing question of how can something so serious affect our whole sleep system and the whole system of our mood? And, and then why does it go away? So there are lots of mysteries. Danielle believes her son may have KLS. She's taking Karu to Paris, where she's managed to get an appointment with one of the world's leading specialists. It's a double-edged sword, really, because I really need a diagnosis, but if we get the diagnosis we expect, also that's kind of life-changing moving forward as well, so it's, it's quite a big thing to be dealing with. Fourteen-year-old Karu Harris might just be on the brink of solving the medical mystery that makes him take to his bed for days on end. His mum Danielle has brought him to Paris for tests. She believes he has an extremely rare sleep disorder called Klein-Levin syndrome. However, there's a problem. We just found out coming over that um, the scanner for his PET scan is not working, um, which I'm a bit disappointed about. Um, I think they can still make the diagnosis without having a PET scan. Carew will spend the next 24 hours at PTA Salpatriere Hospital, where he's going to be monitored and seen by a French consultant who specializes in KLS. There is no specific test, like a blood test or a sleep monitoring, it does not raise the diagnosis. The diagnosis is mostly clinical. You have to interview the parents. So when did it start, the first time you noticed something abnormal? So the first thing that happened was he'd been swimming a lot, and at the end of that day he could not open his eyes and he had this horrendous pain. Children and teenagers do not remember very well what happened, so their interview with them is not very helpful. <laughs> but the parents, it's really, really helpful. This year, he's had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten episodes. And the longest is the five, five weeks. Karu is given a memory test. He's seen by a psychiatrist and undergoes extensive interviews with Dr. Arnulf and her colleagues. Finally, the news he and his mum have been waiting three years to hear. Dr. Arnulf has a diagnosis. So, uh, I'm not sure that it's kind of syndrome because you had this episode of major hypersomnia sleeping 20, 22 hours per day, which is really typical of the disease. It's still a mystery as to what causes KLS. There's no known cure, but in some cases it can be treated. I think you have way too much episodes, too many episodes, so it's impacting on you. On your school, on your, um, I'm sure you missed a lot of football. Now we have a good experience with a treatment, a preventive treatment that is called lithium. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Good. good. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm really excited. Wow, that was fantastic. Yes, it is. Lithium treatment is only used in more serious cases of KLS. If the drug works for Karu, it could stop him from having any more episodes, or at the very least, significantly reduce the number and frequency of the attacks. They will prepare the certificate and the prescription. Yeah. Eventually, the condition may disappear. The average length of time someone suffers with KLS is 13 years. Hopefully we can go and pick up a prescription next today and he can start taking the lithium tonight and... I'm done. So gone, hopefully. Hopefully, we might see the end of these episodes. Um, I can't believe it. <laughs>